Hi guys and welcome, I'm Master Roberts and we'll be playing the bridge or at least doing walkthroughs of the different levels of it. It seems like it's a very, very good platformer type of game. It's very unique, created by a bunch of independent developers. And uh, if you don't get what this reference is to, it's to Isaac Newton. So it's very heavily focusing on the physics and also the amazing art style of the game. It's quite similar to Braid. Although Braid was very much uh, colourful and very intensely coloured. Whereas this is just black, black and white, which actually really adds to the effects of the game. Here is our house where we get to choose the different missions and levels from. So let's go chapter one first up. Now each chapter has six different missions there. I think that's Isaac Newton on the left with I think the second guy. I'm not sure what his name is, like MC Brian or something of the sort. Uh, but He's also supposedly quite influential of the making of the game. So the game is made by two guys, quite impressive really. Uh, one with the actual idea for the game and another guy that created the art style. Uh, so they're both extremely important parts of the game, they really add to the game. Uh, what we've got to do, this is obviously the very first level. So we're just going to go do that loop the loop and go through this little hole. And then keep walking forward and do this other loop the loop. These first couple of missions, as you'd expect, are extremely easy and shouldn't cause us too many problems, but you never know. You never know with me because this is, well, not blind. No one would want to see me get stuck and do a level for 40 or so minutes, which some of these are really brain busters. The library. Okay. So now what we've got to do, clearly this slides. We've got to get the key as well to get the door unlocked. Let's go get the key. I'm going to even it out because gravity always pulls down as you'd expect it to. Or we can change the perspective of the level. So although gravity pulls down, we can change that. So now this is called the menace, which introduces to us the actual menace which is a ball as you might be able to see on the very bottom we've got to get to the door so this is quite difficult because at least one of the first ones where you have to really start using your head so first of all let's hop in over here i'm pretty sure i'll fail a couple of times which of course just makes it that much more exciting Okay, and we want that to go to where the fish is, or the fish symbol, the menace. So it's already gone down there, and now, as you might have already noticed, all we've got to do is just easily walk up to the door. Hey presto, mission completed. The courtyard. So this has another damned menace. There's pretty much one way to complete these missions, it's not like it's... Well, it's pretty linear, although there might be slight variations of how you can complete missions. It's pretty much all the same at the end of the day, the way you finish one mission. We'll just keep walking forward. We don't want to well, fall off the map, which is when you lose, but there is no falling damage. And you don't lose any damage like that. And we do want the menace to swing a little bit more. Oh, 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 that was a bit of a problem. <laughs> At least I can show you how the uh, rewind works. Very much like Braid. Okay. So let's hide, if I can, up in this little alcove, which is specifically made for us, no doubt. Take a swing, hopefully it gets stuck. There we go. And now we are able to go get the key without any problems. Now the menaces are going to come back down. They'll be facing, at least they'll be going down, down, down continuously. There we go. It's not going to be bothering us anymore. What we're going to do is hop back down, change the perspective so we're 
back on level terms with the door. And there we go. The spiral loading. Now this is probably the very first one where you have to really start using your head. So first up, you don't really need to worry about where you are. You need to just look at the different keys because you're not going to fall off. So let's just keep changing the perspective or moving the whole thing to the right. And we are looking at the key, which is on the right hand side now. If only you could see me point to it. But we're not even worrying what we're doing. We're just looking at the key and it'll start falling down now. Beautiful. So I might as well pick it up. Because why not? Thank you. And now let's head over to the other way. So there's two locks that we've got to get. It's not like you can get only one. You've got to get both. So what we want this key to do is if you're following the track of it, it looks like it'll fall out of the map. It definitely gets quite tricky. So it's going to start falling any moment now. Once the gravity takes effect and the slope is too much for it. There we go. I'm going to make it a controlled descent. Nothing too fast. And then move up, move up, move up. Oh, that was close. Okay. And that's pretty much what we did with the previous key. Let's make it follow that track. It's actually really easy if you use your fingers to point to and have a look at the different tracks. It gives you a better look at where the keys will go and just where you need to go. Because it does get quite confusing, which is the whole point of the game, really. Let's go get the key which we've earned. Actually, we'll make it come to us. Beautiful. And the final mission, the Nook. So we've got a menace. Looks like we're in someone's bookshelf. Rather weird looking bookshelf. <laughs> okay. So let's start moving this to the left. And we want the menace to be next to the plant. Where the cactus is or whatever that plant is. We'll just move our guy to the very right so we won't fall down. Now we want to, to, the menace to go back to where we spawned at and just completely go over our heads. Fantastic, like so. Now all we've got to do is really jump there to this part. And what do you know? Chapter one has been completed. Pretty simple. Now, uh, just like Braid, it does give us these messages. I don't know if it'll tell us anything at the end. Like I think Braid talked about nuclear bombs or something of the sort. So I finally found someone who shares my passion for esoteric mathematics. We've agreed to begin work on some of my ideas. With his help, my dreams could be realized. Now what I think this is about is the two men or guys that have actually made the game. Uh, I think that's what the bust is trying to tell us. But until next time, we'll be back with chapter two and a full walkthrough of that very shortly.